alongside me other than Julian Porter. Well, Julian, you've been here before. We're joining you for the first time. Welcome. And um, what can we expect? We can expect a lot from the European Rally Championship. It is literally the stepping stone from regional rallying up to the World Championship. If you have any ambitions to make it to the top, you really need to kind of come through the European Rally Championship. And if you look at their role of honour of who has been here and been champions it's and impressive. succeeded in here, it is impressive. So it's a very, very good stepping stone. It's also a good championship for privateer drivers who just want to come and have some international rally fun. Well, there's going to be plenty of fun for you over the weekend and plenty of action. Tonight, we start with a new addition, a super special stage. It will be starting for you in a matter of moments. There's a quick blast through the town of Faf. Eight stages tomorrow, two to nine, 7.15 to 8 o'clock and then we complete the seven stages with another new addition the power stage to the european rally championship so that is the seven stages from 7 15 to 4 15 in the afternoon well it may be an action-packed weekend but it's also an action-packed season eight rounds to complete before we crown our champions let's have a look at what is coming up you know full well that we're in portugal then we head to the azores and then to canaries and then to poland and then julian we've got a few more. Well, that's it. The second half of the season, we go to Leopaya in Latvia, and then we go to Rome, and we have a massive event around Rome in Italy. Then one of the famous and stalwarts of the championship, Barham Czech rallies Lynn, and as you can see, we're still to announce the final round of the championship. Give us a little bit of time. We'll get that to you in a couple of weeks. All right. Well, there's plenty of familiar faces here for round one. Let's check in with the drivers and see how they're feeling ahead of uh, the rally. You have like here fast flowing stages with um, like, oh, a lot of old crest stuff and basically a lot of uh, camber, deep camber on, on each side, which we would call notes where we'd hook on them corners to carry more speed. So there's some of that, but then there's other stages that are just like just dead, dead flat and a lot of over crest and, and an awful lot of narrows here. So you have a lot of wide and narrows and wide and narrows. I like to talk about these corners that they lure you in. Yeah, it's like, you know, you don't have a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that uh, some places uh, 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 the racer has a quite good, quali uh, quite good grip. And some places, absolute nothing. Like, uh, like ice uh, without ice tires. Like I say sometimes, this one rally to accelerate more with the head than with the foot because need to be intelligent to arrive in the end Sunday. We're quite surprised uh, by our pace in Sweden, so hopefully we'll be surprised again. It's basically corner after corner after corner. Uh, so uh, for an Estonian, it's uh, quite a different, different challenge. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite rough. You need to be, uh, you need to mind the stones, uh, be very wary that uh, it's easy to get a puncture, but uh, uh, it's also tremendous fun, I would say. The Portuguese drivers are very fast as well every year, in these conditions more because they know it. But there is uh, some fast drivers, from, some from Spain, some from uh, other countries that they are always fast, like Tempestini, drivers like that, good friends as well. So we will fight together and try to enjoy the stages. It's really difficult, really, really slippery, but uh, to be honest with you, I, I want these conditions, I like these conditions, so we can make the difference for the other drivers. I'm really confident in mud conditions. <laughs> and mud conditions it is as well. I'm really glad that someone is confident out there because uh, that qualifying stage gives you just an idea of what's in store. All right, well, qualifying happens. And uh, because of qualifying, it meant that there was a ballot where our drivers could pick the positions that they wanted on the road. So we saw Georg Linemar pick her fifth. We sort of were guessing that maybe third was the optimal position. Were you surprised at that fifth pick? Uh, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a driver's choice. But I mean, but let's see. This is this was them in qualifying. Almindo Arroja, he was the winner here in 2020. So he's got a lot of experience here, many, many times uh, doing Rally Portugal, which we've known as running these. That's why he said so confident in the mud. <laughs> and these tricky conditions, you can see it. It was real kind of hit and miss. There was sometimes sunshine, sometimes rain. Eric Seiss, 
We, we know him from the ERC from two or three years now. He stepped up to this category uh, the previous season, but also doing a part program in WRC yeah. as well. An impressive so, performance. An impressive performance. But someone who was, uh, as you say, was, was quick. Uh, he said in that interview just said there, he was impressed with his performance in Sweden. And that's what he did on the first qualifying of the season. Yeah, there you go. Just so you can see your top five there. Georg Linemar, Eric Saiz, Arminio Arrugio, Neil and Neil Solers. And uh, then as you just have a look down at the line there, you can see in 17th, uh, Ken Torn and uh, Ruben Rodriguez rounds out the top 15. This is the pick. Whether this is a big gamble or this is a simple one. Simple five. You want number five. Simple five. I mean... five for car number 17, Linemar. Thank you very much. Uh, it so, sort of uh, seemed like the golden spot to have. We have uh, some cars in front, so when it's foggy we can maybe see some braking marks, but uh, also because the conditions will be quite muddy tomorrow, the road won't be too bad if we uh, start a bit, uh, bit more at the front, So as you will probably usually do, so uh, yeah, five seemed like the perfect place. Well, there we go, Julian. You were just about to say it seemed like that was his perfect place. He mentioned fog. We've heard rumours of fog tomorrow morning. I mean, we, we've had a little bit of everything. We, we were <laughs> up well in, had fog into the mix. <laughs> yeah, we have had a bit of everything. It has rained a lot. You could see on some of those pictures in there. It was quite rutted as well. So it is going to be very demanding. This rally ran last year in October in similar conditions, and it was really, really demanding. And the, these guys and girls tomorrow, they've got a big job on, and it will be a bit of survival of the fittest tomorrow. Do you know what? I I think survival mode will kick in. All right, well, the action will be starting very shortly. It is a super special stage through the town of Faf for cobbles and tarmac and a whole lot more. It is a fan stage, so you'll be seeing how much of the rally history and heritage is uh, there for our Portugal, for Portuguese fans, I should say. They absolutely love rally, and you are just about to see exactly how much. Are you ready for the first stage of the European Rally Championship? Let's head to the action. Absolutely. Welcome along, everyone. It's round one of the ERC 2022. We are waiting patiently for the first stage to get underway. As Kiri mentioned, it is a pleasing spectator, super special stage. Just 1.4 kilometers in length. This is the road order then. Ken Torn is kicking us off. Then Jose Luis Garcia, Raquel Somaschini, then Porrick Duffy, who you saw his very passionate interview just a, a few moments ago. We'll be chatting to all these drivers at the stage end and, of course, watching the action through this one. But it is, of course, not a gravel stage to kick us off. We're going to be on a little bit of tarmac, a bit of cobbles thrown in there. We're lucky tonight it isn't raining. The rain has held off for now at least. We'll be seeing all of these crews out on the gravel stages of where we are right now, which is in the heart of Portuguese rally territory in the FAF region, so beloved by many fans, and you will see why this weekend as we get underway with stage one of the ERC for 2022. And it is Ken Torn then, the Estonian driver, who kicks us off. Now, it's a big step up for Ken this year. Junior has very much been his bag. ERC three juniors, ERC juniors, juniors in the WRC as well, but he steps, steps up to the main category this year in a Rally 2 car. We're looking forward to seeing what he'll be able to do out there this weekend. Now, don't let the fact that this stage is quite short deceive you. These drivers have got to be pretty careful not to make a big mistake this evening. This is where they do not want it to be going wrong. It can be very slippery out there. We've had a lot of rain, as we've mentioned. And I'm sure for the first cars on the road, well, probably for all of the cars making their way through on gravel ties, this is going to be a tough little stage to complete. Don't make a mistake on the first one. We've got the big days ahead, of course. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to be chatting to our crews. We'll get their thoughts at the end of the opening test. We'd love to hear from you as well. What are you expecting to see out there this weekend on this opening round of the European Rally Championship? Let us know using the hashtag ERCLive. And that is Ken Torn through then the first time on the board for us. One minute, 27.7. 
Neil Cole joins us as a stage end reporter here this weekend, and he's going to be chatting to our crews for us. And Julian Porter joins me in co-commentary for this one. first through the uh, Super Special, how was it? I, I think it's not bad, but uh, we need some uh, rookie mistakes, but uh, we, uh, we don't have experience with that kind of car, so yeah. But I, I think it's uh, nice to be here, not uh, hit the concrete, and that's, that's the main thing. OK, back with the action now, then with Garcia, Jose Luis Garcia. Two events done in Spain so far this season. He, like many drivers, competed on a rally in Spain just a couple of weeks ago. Gravel event, which Efren Lorena did and won. Yeah, Garcia was seventh overall. Yeah, there were similar conditions to potentially what they could have over the next two days. But, uh, but I mean, I, a street stage in Faf. I know, yeah. I mean, it's... we're so used to the gravel here, yeah. aren't we? If you've followed rallies, in the Portuguese Championship, if you followed the WRC, then you will know well the gravel stages here. I think it's going to be a tough weekend th out there, though, Julian. From what you know, the drivers are saying to us, from, from what they've seen and from the forecast, a lot of rain heading our way tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, as we just mentioned there, it, it, it rained a lot here last year. It's very, very demanding when it's raining a lot. It, it's quite incredible, but uh, I think it's quite fortunate that it's not raining here tonight on this stage because cobblestones, pavements, curbs and things like that to hit. It is uh, very, very, very difficult and, and demanding. It really is. And that's the stage complete then. Just 4.9 seconds behind Ken Torn's time. We'll get a couple of words from him now at the stage end with Neil. Jose, how was that, the first stage of the rally? Yeah, we have a little incident. We hit the, in the backside with the, with the ball in the, in the runabout, but uh, all OK. That's Thank you. Kelly Somaschini, we spoke to a little bit earlier today. A little bit of difficulty for in the test this week, but if, you, if you're going to have a problem, if you're going to roll, which she did, testing it is where you do it, and, and that's unfortunately what happened to her. She said the conditions out there are really going to test her this weekend. She's got the very experienced uh, Nicola Arena alongside her, and she said he's played a huge part in you know, helping her understand what the conditions are going to be like. First time competing here at this event, so I think it's going to be it's going to be a baptism a fight for everyone out there this weekend, Jules. Yeah, it is. As you say, yes, yeah, she had a role at that, uh, on, the, on the test on uh, on Wednesday, it was, and really, really demanding and tricky. Uh, Co-driver, as you said, uh, was in with her last year, so at least has that year of experience. Did the Italian Gravel Championship this year, planning a, a programme in ERC and also doing the Italian Championship during uh, the season as well. So Rakeli uh, has, has quite a lot of uh, experience around, did a lot of running in two-wheel drive cars until she moved up to the Citroen. Yeah. Basically, it was for running Monza 2020. Yeah. She's completed the stage. We'll get her thoughts in just a few moments. So, Raquel, the uh, rally has officially started. How was the Super Special for you? Yes, it's very strange to try uh, a stages by foot and then uh, do it for gas. But it's, uh, tomorrow the race will be long, but uh, now only funny, only happy moments. Yeah, happy, happy moments indeed. She mentioned on foot when they wreckied the stage, they could only walk through it rather than drive through it. So that's what she's referencing there. But very difficult, very Julian, to actually like try and, you know, kind of get your head around what you can do with, with the car when you're just walking through it. But she's done well. 
We have three drivers through so far. Uh, Raquel was 10.2 seconds off the pace of Ken Torn, who is our leader so far. Plenty more drivers to come through for you. We've got Porig Duffy in the stage now. And that's the split you can see on the screen at the, uh, let's call it the midpoint, shall we? It's only a 1.4 kilometre stage. Yeah, that's a, it's a short stage, isn't it? And it, it, but I mean, yeah, it's great that it's actually not raining. One, I think, for all of the people who are out there. Absolutely, you don't but, want to be getting two, soaked. But two, it, the, the cobblestones, particularly at the start, I was talking to Jose Pedro Fonts, and I said, oh, what's the stage like out there tonight? And he was like, it's, it's so nice when it's not wet. He said, but the start would be really demanding. It still could be demanding. Sparks coming off the front and rear brakes there as Porik is jumping onto them on that downhill section. It's the brake pad material uh, on the brake discs. That's what that is. It's uh, don't panic too much about that. Is kind of in theory what you would expect. We've seen him around on the ERC, on the WRC, the Irish Tarmac Championship as well. He's living in Portugal now, actually in Sintra, beautiful part of the world to be living. Let's find out what Porik thinks about that stage with Neil. Porik, it's a spectacular, super special. How was it behind the steering wheel? Yeah, look, it's uh, very tight with high kerbs, full tight, so there's plenty, plenty of places to pull a wheel off, so just trying to get through it nice and tidy and not lose much time. Uh, the cobbles were way slippier in the car park than we thought, so we lost a lot of time on the donut, but I'm sure everybody else is going to ex experience the same thing. But good, it's good fun to get us warmed up. Yeah, it is a little bit of a warm-up for what is to come tomorrow. It's a full-on day on Saturday, and as I mentioned earlier, the weather is set to turn a little bit more inclement. Nice and dry out there this evening, but tomorrow could be, well, torrential rain. Someone who is massively passionate, Paolo Nobre. I spoke with him today, Julian. He's it, great. It, He's it's brilliant. Just, he is a joy. He absolutely loves his rallying. He's delighted to be back here in Portugal. He said rallying is such a huge family. He said, but it feels like a small family. You come, you meet the same people. He couldn't wait to get out there this weekend, but... He's one of many drivers who has said you have to use your brain out there this weekend because flat out is not going to be the way in these really difficult conditions. Pack crowds down there then. I think we'll see a lot more umbrellas tomorrow. I've got to just make sure, as Porig was alluding to there before about the curbs, th these are the streets that, you know, you can see the pavements and the curbs, you don't want to like run wide anywhere and clip a curb on the outside or slam into a curb, sorry, on the outside. You can uh, start to seriously damage suspension. And yeah, there is a, a service in the morning, but uh, the last thing you want to be doing is giving your team a lot of work to do. But a 135.3 is the stage time for Paolo Nobre and Gabriel yep. Morales. So five drivers through then. Ken Torn continuing to lead at the moment with 127.7. Paolo, you got a smile on your face safely through the Super Special. Our special stages in the city are fantastic for the public, and this is important to do it. I don't love it because I think it's too risky for nothing, but if the public enjoy, we should do it, and let's focus in tomorrow. Yeah, I think words that, that many people will echo, they're so very easy to make quite a big mistake on these small stages. But, you know, the people are out there and it is taking rallying to the people. But I'm sure we're going to see the stages pretty full this weekend, regardless of any weather conditions. Yeah, I think so as well. That's a good split there. Half a second, I appreciate. Yeah, it's half a K in or so, but half a second. But uh, Lucas... Uh, Kobata, where his brother and the co-driver see uh, a full-season campaign for them in the European Rally Championship. And yeah, that's going to be an interesting dynamic, Jules, isn't yeah. it? You know, we, it's not the first time we've seen brothers together this, in the car. It, Rodriguez, I think Rodriguez has got his brother in as well, and uh, you know, I remember the famous, the famous brothers, the Panizzi, Panizzi brothers. brothers. So it is something. But Mats Osberg's actually been doing some driver training uh, with Lucas earlier on in the week. I'm not sure. I think I don't know whether Mats has stayed on for the rally or whether he's gone home. Um, not sure, but uh, it, it's when, when we say he's uh, Lucas is doing the whole season with the European Rally Championship. It's your best seven scores out of eight. So it's going to be close here. It is going to be close. Oh, uh, 2.2 down to 129. So, yeah, but a good run through there. 
But yeah, you, you don't have to compete in every round. It, it is your best seven scores. To, to win the championship, really, you need to do all eight rounds because then you've got one that maybe can be a bit of a, a duffer, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you can, can just get rid of You can get rid of that one. <laughs> Forget that about one. that round. That didn't happen. No. <laughs> so, uh... Let's see from Lucas. Lukas, that looked like a good, uh, a good spin through there. Ah, it's fine. It's a really, really good stretch. Uh, a lot of spectators. Uh, that's uh, for me is very fun and uh, very sleepy barrel. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very slippy out there. Now, Mexican driver Ricardo Trevino, who, gosh, has been competing for so many years, Julian. It's always great to see him out and here in the ERC. Yeah, that's it. In the ERC, we've, we've got a Brazilian who's travel, we've got a Mexican. So it does show that the international flavor of the championship and as, as new viewers will be learning a bit more about the European Rally Championship, it, it suits uh, our privateer drivers, our businessmen who can't afford a week, 10 days away on like maybe World Rally Championship events, they can come in here, they can do the four day format, which is part of the rally. So reconnaissance and rally have to happen within four days. And then they can, they don't have to take too much time away from, from either families or businesses. So this is where you get uh, some, some drivers who want to go to some international rallying, but can't afford a week, 10 days away yeah. or, on a world championship race. So that's where you see your, your, your Paolo Nobres, your, your, your Trevinos. It's, I want to go rallying properly, but I can't afford the time away of a World Championship program. And ELC fits that bill perfectly for those drivers. If you are just joining us, stage one is where we're at. The only stage this evening before a full two days of gravel action here in the heartland of Portuguese rallying. It's so tricky in the dark, isn't it? You can see it's just a little bit nervous, a little bit edgy. We've talked about, you see, he, he dropped a lot of time towards the end. He, it, I don't know whether the car, the car had a lot of flames coming up back of it, as if it was like misfiring slightly. But uh, I'm not sure uh, about that. He just he seemed to drop time towards the end of it, Ricardo. <laughs> Ricardo. Slippery. Slippery and a lot new things to get used to today. How was it? Yes. The feeling, the tires, the gravel, this is mm, difficult in tarmac, but good, <laughs> fine. Gracias. Pedro Almeida here, another Portuguese driver. Again, something else that we'll see this, this year is, obviously, the European Rally Championship is eight rounds, but what we do is we amalgamate with national championship, regional championship, so, this rally is a ra the first round of the Portuguese Championship, so that's why it's heavily loaded with Portuguese drivers. Same for the Azores. But when we go to Canaries, we'll have some of the brightest talents from Spain joining. So you will get your regular season campaigners, but you'll get your what you could call them wild cards, for example, who come in and want to compete and up potentially try and upset the drivers who are regularly in the European Rally Championship. And how they can upset them is they've got that experience of this particular rally but against the experience and, and maybe the more season campaigners have a over a season. So it is interesting to see that dynamic, how that works out. Ricardo was really, he, he was a bit scared, wasn't he? He said it was really slippy to kneel at the end of that stage. Pedro yeah, yeah, his car yeah, around, pretty he? wide eyes. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't look too nervous about it. It's going to be a good time. Two, two point nine <laughs> down. Sorry for Pedro. Did you that's see third how we fastest. Went that? Yeah, how we went through. Yeah, he was that giving it a good push towards the end, wasn't he? Two point nine then, slower than Kenton, still with the fastest time here on stage one, the fast stage. Let's see from Pedro. That was a very good time. How was it out on the stage? Yeah, it was. It was nice. Uh, I don't really like this kind of stages, but I know it's good for the public. Uh, yeah, it's just getting through and not not a lot, losing a lot of time. So tomorrow we can uh, we can go. Yeah, tomorrow they can go. That's when the, it really hots up. Here is a, a young Spanish talent. He's been in the European Rally Championship for a couple of years now, but in the two-wheel drive category. But Pep Bassas, uh, he's got to learn the four-wheel drive now, but Pep's big prospect for Spain in the future. Yeah? Yeah. 
really, really talented driver. We, we've got a couple of drivers, though, who are stepping up now. Yeah. And it's really going to be interesting how they get to grips, certainly with the difficult conditions we'll see out there this weekend with four-wheel drive. That's it. I mean, Pep, as we say there, I mean, his dad was a competitor as well, uh, famous in Spain. It will be interesting to see how he adapts to the four-wheel drive, moving up, in theory, potentially, if you're talented, it should make it a lot easier and a lot faster. Um, some events he won't have done before in the two years he's done before, but once he gets to events that he's used to, particularly maybe because he's Spanish, a tarmac event he might favour, but Bassas, uh, I, 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 like, I like the kid. I think he's got a lot of talent. Let's have a look at the, uh, the counter. Now we're coming towards the end of the stage for Pep. There's the countdown to Ken Torn's the time. There. Using all of the road. So it ends up being 3.6 seconds down then from the fastest time. That's fourth overall right now. Pep, fourth quickest so far. How was it out there on the Super Special? Just uh, trying the car. Uh, trying to get the feeling, uh, and let's improve. <laughs> Thank you. Pedro Morales here, and obviously one of our Hyundai's. Hyundai heavily represented it, the local importer, but Peugeot Hyundai, supporting three cars. And you know, this is what, again, the European Rally Championship does. It brings in importer-backed teams from different countries and different manufacturers and uh, Hyundai have a three strong team in there. Only eight tenths of a second then off Torn at that midpoint but then we've seen uh, quite a few drivers drop a little bit towards the end of uh, this stage. I, I think to be to be honest <clears throat> the end of the stage looks quite fast. And, I, and I, obviously in the dark, you can't quite see where the curbs are. They've not wreckied the stage as in the cars. They've no, they've done the it on foot. So it, it, it's you know, sometimes we see drivers being able to go through in golf buggies yeah, or, or yeah. whatever when it comes to short super specials like this. But tonight they've actually walked through as they're wrecking, just making notes as to where they're going to find, obviously, those curbs that, that Porrick was talking about earlier that could potentially do you a little bit of damage if you you get a little bit too close or which sections you can you can cut on it's all being done by foot and that time just 2.4 seconds then off the pace at the front so third fastest neil cole on duty for us with the microphone at the stop control let's hear from him Pedro, a smile on your face, third quickest so far. How was it? Yes, it was not bad. It was the first stage uh, with this car. Uh, I was careful because uh, we can lose everything in these stages, so uh, it was good to be here. OK, Miguel Correra. Had a good run through uh, the, the qualifying stage today. I think the qualifying was really quite eighth, um, surprising eighth for, for many drivers out there. We didn't expect, and I don't think he expected, uh, to be the fastest when we saw Linema come through. But and he's fastest here, Carrera, oh, by here two tenths of a second. Could we see now a new fastest time go on the board? Kentorn's held on to it for 10 drivers, can uh, can we see that change? When we were doing the, the start selection, uh, Miguel's quite shy and uh, his team representative came up to me and said, if you're gonna, if, if we need to speak to him, can, can we kind of make it like simply very shy person? So he might not, we're not sure what we're gonna get out of him at stage ends. Uh, and we have kind of briefed some of these drivers. If you are a little bit shy, tell us, as simply as you can how the stage was and if you want to tell us in your home language we can get this translated yeah, no, absolutely Whoa, oh we are, we are yeah. 
quicker. Yeah, yeah. Six tenths of a second up. It is the new fastest time on the board. 127.7. I think he's going to be happy with his day, isn't he, today? Oh, I think it's been good. Miguel, you're the quickest so far. That was a really good stage. Everything OK. The street stage, it's a very cool. I'm happy. You should be. Obrigado. That's all we need to know. You should be a happy man. Right now, it's the fastest time. Let's see if it's going to be Eclipse. 127.1, then, is the time on the board. Well, if it's going to get Eclipse... Unfortunately for, for Miguel, the, the guy who is quickest in the, in the, the, the qualifying stage is next on the stage. Yeah. He's next in, so it's just rain at the top. <laughs> might not last very long, but let's see. Estonian driver, oh. Gail Glinamawa. Very, very close to the barriers there, but did it perfectly. Nice donut around the roundabout. <laughs> that was close. Tony's 30 RC start. Oh, he's fastest on the split. Do you know what he told me today? I interviewed him before he equal. went to qualifying. Equal fastest. And he said, you know, I haven't done a gravel rally for a while, so I'm not sure how my pace is going to be out there this weekend. Let's take a look little this. replay of that. Look that. Oh, look how close <laughs> he is. Wow. Ooh, shit. Nice. It's a nice bit of drifting that for a Friday drifting. evening. Yeah. Well, he definitely did that with style, didn't he? But he really played down his chances on this event, you know, even in qualifying, and then he went and, and set the fastest time. Yeah, definitely a good afternoon. Could be a very good evening for him. Ooh, oh, plenty of really pace really into that. Around, isn't he? Back equal on that split. Uh, he seems to have really... He, he had a real tough year last year in WRC2 and in ERC. But this year, he's had a really good run in Sweden. He was... Happy with his pace. We are down, though. Correa still is actually yep. out front. Correa still our rally leader here. It's Linema who takes third fastest, 1.2 seconds slower, but a pretty spectacular drift around the, uh, the roundabout. Georg, that looked pretty spectacular out there. How was it from in here? Yeah, not ideal. We... Uh... It was a lot slippier than we expected, so uh, it might have looked spectacular, but uh, we lost uh, uh, we lost time, so not ideal. But okay, we had some fun. It looked great. <laughs> it <was> fab. <laughs> We're, We're happy with it. <laughs> so here we are, the two brothers, Ruben Rodriguez in the driver's seat. Azorian driver, Azorian champion last season, so uh, he uh, has has that experience he obviously moved up into four wheel drive last season it was his first time he's been a two wheel drive driver until that point so seems to adapt it very well to four wheel drive second quickest on the split is he is he second oh he's oh, equal. He's equal. three of them equal at that point look at that so there's the brake disc look at the spark yeah it's from the brake pads so the material of the brake pads so the light on the co-driver's side so he can actually read his notes we talk about it, don't we, about night driving. This is a bit different to what we have when you're deep into the forests or into the tarmac stages around the world. You've got street lights, which kind of kind of aid and, and abet you so slightly, depending on what colour they are and where they are. Let's see what kind of time this is going to shape up. But then a reminder that Correa's time is 127.1. Ruben Rodriguez, let's see. The countdown to that time. Oh! I'll tell you what, we're all right though. One point six slower, fourth. That's, that's fourth fastest. It's still a good run through there. Yeah. You think? I almost thought he was going to take it. I then. did, yeah, but only his second year in uh, four drive cars. We go to his to his home island next in yep. Azores. You know what I mean? So should be uh, back to back uh, gravel events. Ruben, uh, fourth quickest so far. Did you enjoy that stage? Yeah, it's a very good stage. Uh, and uh, very difficult. Uh, and uh, everything OK. And, and in uh, Portuguese? 
Jose Pedro Forge. Uh, uh, this guy is so cool. He looks a bit like George Clooney. Now, you wouldn't expect me to say that. Judge, uh, I really didn't expect you to say that. so cool. I, I, I like him. He, I love the colour schemes on the cars. I mean, he's carried the same sponsors for a long time. And he just looks so, so good. Co-driver in response. She had a really bad accident a few years ago and had to sit out a little while, but uh, a great partnership. Look at all the people behind the fence there, up on the uh, the top as well. So this is the uh, the tyres that they do a donut around. Big open area. The town hall is in the back. The, th the, the blue and uh, yellow lit up building is the town hall. Close to that yeah, curb there, wasn't it? Curbs that you just want to be staying away from. Tell you what, I'm curious to see what this time is because we're really kind of. It's a lot of commitment. He's heavy on the brakes in yeah. sector, though, isn't he? Yeah, we're, 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 oh, drop a little yeah, bit. Yeah, two point four seconds down, then fifth fastest through for Fonge. The blaze of the lights at the stop control. Let's get a couple of words with the man who apparently looks like George Clooney. I'm begging to differ slightly. OK, have you seen him? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did see well, him earlier. Look cool look about him. He's definitely got swagger. As you came to the stop there, the engine cut, but apart from that, everything OK? I don't uh, listen. I don't listen to you. Ah, I have a problem in the start, but OK, everything OK. OK, I wonder what that issue was then at the start for him. Could be a multitude of things, really could, but uh, obviously, uh, something I didn't mention, obviously, but uh, having a part of here, first of all, uh, a young driver who won what was the ERC2 category last year, who's driving the Suzuki and moved up to the, the main premier class in the European Rally Championship very quick in qualifying. This young kid, another promising Spaniard. I, I, There's a lot of them around at the moment, it there seems. There is a lot of them around. Tenths of a second down at that split. But again, our two, the two promising Spaniards we've had so far are moving up to the top category for the first time, so we will have to kind of give them a little bit of time. As you can see here, he's enjoying sliding around. Oh, look how sideways he is there, and lots of wheel spin. <laughs> Still continuing to lead, then, is Miguel Correra. He's throwing it so aggressively through this last sector. But it is 4.3 seconds slower. That's 10 fa tenth fastest through. I am keen to see how, how, how he progresses during the season because, as I, as I said, he had a really, really strong... I'm sure if my memory's right, he won every round he did last year in his category. Wow. Yeah. Javier, it looked like you were pushing quite hard in there. Yeah, but uh, I made that mistake uh, in the... in the donut size. But, <laughs> Very slippery, but uh, it's well. For for this day, is is very well. Yeah, he was very wide on the the donut around the uh, the tyres, wasn't he? I think that's what he's referring to. Luis Villarino here did most of last season. Get someone who's learning the. the the art of driving rally cars again. Unfortunately, when he came to this rally last year, he crashed in the shakedown, the free practice runs, and actually didn't come, even start the event. Such was uh, how tough even the free practice and shakedown runs were. Has been rallying for a long time. His European Rally Championship debut was in 2001, even before it was reformed to the newest kind of format. So, yeah. uh, has been around a long time, gone in and out of, it, of rallying.
through business commitments and, and work and things like that. So. Well, then, again, we, you know, we referred to that, oh, oh that was, that yeah, sector there. Tricky corner. Quite a few of them have almost been caught out on that corner. But there's quite a few drivers. Uh, uh, Ricardo Trevino, power no brain. You know, he disappeared for a couple of years. Yeah. Spent most of his time really focused on, you know, the football. The football club and the businesses. And uh, now he's he's back in action again. You see a lot of competitors like that. If you are just joining us tonight, we're on stage one of the event. Tarmac cobbles. That's what it's all about tonight. Tomorrow we get into the gravel stages and all the action that that will bring us in pretty difficult weather conditions. Rain forecast tomorrow. Luis, how difficult was that stage? On the on the tarmac. Well, the stage with the glass of, of gravel is difficult, but it's beautiful because in the town and for the people, I think that is the uh, good uh, good good look for for the all the people come to go to see the cars. And for us, thank you. Gracias. We turn now then to Alberto Battistoli uh, with Simone Scantolin alongside. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty close. Alberto moving to up to, to like the higher level of ERC a couple of seasons ago. And basically before that, he was kind of every young boy's dream. He was uh, under 25 champion of the historic rallying uh, in Italy. He's driven 0.37, Lancia 0.37s, all sorts of I've stuff. I've seen some fantastic pictures and footage of him in these classic yes. cars. And it's just, like you mentioned, it's. It's not just every boy's dream, Julian. It's everyone's dream. Well, that's it. And, and his dad was a rally driver as well, still rallies. If you ever see an entry, uh, an entry list with the name Lucky on it, it's Alberto Battistoli's dad. He's just called Lucky. So, I mean, <laughs> have you ever wondered who he is? There it is, it's Alberto's dad. Had a quick chat with Alberto earlier. And he, again, another one of the drivers who was reinforcing the fact that the conditions are going to be so difficult out there this weekend. Oh, so much pace into that corner there. They really has to to use the head over the throttle. It's not a bad time on the board, though. 2.9 seconds off the pace right at the front. Seventh fastest. Really, for really nice guy. Really nice guy. I'm very analytical in his, in, in his performances and how things can move forward for him. Let's see how analytical he is here. Alberto, that was your big smile on your face. It was a good time there. Uh, I don't know what the time is, but I enjoyed a lot. And it was quite tricky on some points, but uh, anything for the show. Grazie. Thank you. <laughs> that, and that's what we love, Alberto. Anything for the show out there. And there are plenty of spectators. And a couple of drivers have already mentioned it. You know, the, this kind of stage is purpose built for spectators to get a real glimpse right in the heart of city centres, town centres, wherever. Guarantee you a lot of these people will be out, though. Come whatever the weather tomorrow yeah. to watch the gravel action. Simone Tempestini telling us earlier on how tough and demanding it's going to be. And uh, I mean, Tempestini, he, he, he's quick. He's had a lot of bad luck as well. Uh, equal, there's now four of them. Four equal on the split. Seconds through there. Uh, yeah, 400 metres in. You know, we've seen Tempestini, he's been a world champion, junior world champion. So it's not, it's, he's come and he's ebbed and flowed between the world championship and European running championship multiple times. Six time, actually, Romanian champion. So uh, he has a really impressive lineup of events yes. and, and titles that he's taken. And he, he, he's quick, and he seems to be quick on all surfaces. I, I think, to be fair, this year's European Rally Championship is, is very, very open, naturally. Alexi Lukanak is not around at the minute. Nikolai Grais is not around. Andrew Smith is the drivers who really were at the forefront of last year. Oh, really eight tenths did. of a second off the pace at the front. It's still Miguel who is leading out front for us. Tempestini third fastest. Mario is going to be going to bed tonight, thinking, "Whoa, this is this is good." <laughs> oh, we got a few more drivers Simone, to come through this stage. It's a good time, less than a second off Ken's time. Yeah, it was a super special stage, so it's uh, it doesn't matter a lot, but uh, it's okay. For fun, it's good, and uh, I think uh, it's also good for the the public here, the fans. 
so it's it's good to do stage le stages like this. We hope tomorrow to to keep a good rhythm. And uh, in Romanian. Bruno and Carlos Magalesh. What a combination. Yeah, Bruno, three-time winner in the past of this rally, so uh, plenty of experience here. Okay, we've seen Bruno. I mean, he, he fought for the European Rally Championship in, uh, in 2017, only to crash out on the final round uh, and... and throw away that last little chance that he had him and looking at going head to head in the final round in Leopaya. This car park here, and one of our assistants and helpers who was out there in the stages, Chris Rawls, this is the park Fermi. This is the park Fermi for the rally uh, and the, the gravel car park here in the centre of town. So uh, the town hall in the background, which is lit up in the past has been the, uh, the, the basically the setting for the backdrop of the podium at the end of the rally. Let's see what Bruno can do here. Can Correa's time actually be beaten here? Let's find out. Countdown is on, then 127.1 is what we're looking to beat. Oh, oh no. Do it. No, 1.7 seconds down for Magalesh. 128.8 is the time on the board. Talk us through the uh, super special. That uh, was a good start, uh, a little bit safe. Just in the in the park area when you need to make the donuts it was so slippery, and uh, I was I made the the, the donuts but it's too wide, and I lost a little bit of time. Apart of that, it's okay. Tomorrow is the big rally. It is the big rally tomorrow. In total, we have just under 200 competitive kilometers here at the event. Mendo Araujo, another famous Portuguese name, double champion in the world, in world champion in PWRC, Portuguese champion. Been there, done it, got the T-shirt. No, absolutely, he has every accolade, pretty much. And definitely, you know, one to watch this weekend. He was third here last year when uh, the event was run back in October. Just checking out. He won in 2020. Yes, third last year. Yes, yeah, third. But one last uh, one in 2020. Third last year. Just go back to Magalesh. We've obviously got a couple of sibling pairings. Uh, the Magaleshes are not related. <laughs> just in no, case you're thinking. Just, it. It's just convenient that they have. Yeah, it's convenient they got the same name. So, uh, but yeah, Armindo Araujo. What the, the the Portuguese drivers? We touched on it before, Mark. We, the Portuguese Championship joins up with the ERC, or the ERC joins up with the Portuguese Championship. It's day one, it's tomorrow, that is the, where the points are scored for the Portuguese Championship. So they'll be kind of shadow boxing everybody tomorrow. Ooh, we were close to the curve. Very, uh, but very close in terms of time. He's third fastest, only seven tenths of a second of the pace at the front. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they, the Portuguese drivers kind of pace themselves tomorrow and then. Armindo. Uh, Third quickest so far. Were you pushing in there? I'm the quickest. Third quickest. Uh, I could get two small mistakes, but it was a good stage. No big problems. Okay. Thank I'll you. Got it. Now we talk about the Portuguese championship. This is the defending Portuguese champion. Ricardo Teodosio, he's had quite the day out there today. Brand new team for him this year, brand new car as well. Stepping into the Hyundai. He said to us earlier in the press conference, you know, 46 years of age and finally I've got a manufacturer drive with Hyundai Rally Portugal. It's never too late. Never is too late. Uh, had a little bit of a drama this today, didn't he, Vex? He did, yeah. Well, no, so he's in a new car, he's learning everything about the car, and unfortunately, on their way to free practice, they pressed the button which released the fire extinguisher into the car, so they were covered in what he said, you know, it looks like, looks like we were covered in snow. So they basically had to come back to the service area, clean out the car, clean themselves, get back up. This, is, this seems to be quite slippy, this area here, because they're going, like, further and further wider as well. 
I mean, it's not raining out there, but uh, it is like a little bit of a gravel. Well, not, it's not a little gravel car, but quite a good big space that they've got. But, you know, it's actually quite nice that they've got that space to throw the car around. Yeah. There's a lot of times where they're in that situation. It's so tight and yeah. narrow. You're so right. And we've seen so many drivers take a wheel off yeah. uh, in, in that kind of scenario. Time-wise here, then, we are going to be a little bit slower. Three and a half seconds down off the pace at the front. But the first stage on this event now, driven in that brand new car. Going to be getting to grips with the i20. The business that he's in is a um, chicken restaurant. Ricardo, are you getting more acclimatised to the Hyundai now today? Sorry, did you... What you ask here, I don't listen. Just tell us how the stage was in the new car. Oh, the, the, in, the, in the middle of the stage, where is the park, um, it was very, very slippery. And to go around on those tires, we lose a lot of time. We go very wide and impossible to go close the tires. We lose a lot of time there, but the rest is OK. Team MRF here with Simone Cappadelli. Second year for him with the team. Yeah, they've got a strong driver lineup, haven't they? Campadelli, Hersig, Lorena. But Campadelli, for rallying fans, it is a name that you'd have seen around, competed in the PWRC oh, before. Oh, looking good. WRC3. Oh, the always the first one to go under 29.9. Oh, yeah, but he, oh, yeah, oh, he's oh, got oh, into in the, the wall. wall. But really slowly into the wall. It was next to like a. So this, this is a mistake in the donut section around the ties. He just kind of, yeah, hobbled into the wall is the best way I can describe it. But we were just talking, we've been talking about all the floodlit areas, and then this is totally in the dark, this bit. No lighting at all. Ah, so he was quickest up to that point, only by a tenth of a second at the split, but he's lost all of that and more in that little... I mean, did he stall? Did he stall? Is that what it was? But... He, he just literally headbutted the wall. But, I don't but at a very slow pace. Yeah. I mean, I, do, I doubt whether we're going to see damage when we get to the stop control. We'll take a look at the front of the car, but... But look at the time hemorrhaging, yeah. Oh, what a shame. It was shaping up to be such a good run for Simone Campidelli. But a little bit of a mistake, which we'll find out a little bit more from with Neil. Let's take a look at the front there. I mean, I don't think yeah, it's still scrapes. Just small, small little kind of dike damage. Lucky, though. Lucky. Fortunately. Simone, tell us what happened. Yeah, unfortunately, on the big parking, on the big parking, I arrived really, really fast. And when it was time to, to break uh, on the small stones, it was sleepy like hell, and uh, I had uh, like a high effect. Maybe I arrived too too fast, and probably the damp came in down, and uh, I wasn't able to to slow down the car. I'm really I'm really sorry, but uh, for sure we started uh, our maximum. But uh, I made a mistake. My fault. Something trailing here on the left rear of Solens's car. We've seen sparks coming from the brake disc, which is what I initially, when we very first saw it, but there's something, I think it's the underbody protection is just hanging down, just got a little glimpse of something maybe dangling down there. Sitting get a... Very difficult to see. Yeah, but has he just maybe, like, run over something or clipped something earlier? in the stage. It's nothing disastrous, you can see by the speed he's going at. No, it's... he's looking super quick. He's yeah. the fastest on the uh, the midpoint split we've got. Neil Solans then with Mark Marty alongside. Big what a talent. successful pairing. Yeah. This has been a yeah, huge talent. Big talent. Let's take yeah. a look at this time then. Countdown to Carrera's fastest time, which is still there. However, oh. no, it oh. still remains. Oh. Solans is a tenth of a second slower. So second position right now for Neil Solens. Oh. I, I thought that was a 10th up then, but no, yeah, Carrera yeah, yeah, still it's, has it. a little bit of underbody protection yeah, hanging down. Yeah, just hanging down there. That's what we can see sparking. Let's hear from him. Neil, there's a, a little bit of damage under the car, but you're very close to the quickest time. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, there's a little bit of damage under the car of the rear, but 
you're nearest the quickest time, there's just some metal dragging on the ground. Yeah, no, no, we, we don't hit anything, so... Strange. But, okay, the, the car was good. It's very slippy in some places, but we enjoy this field stage. The rally starts tomorrow. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah, I just think maybe he's just some, run over something or something. It's just a little bit yeah. of small kind of underbody protection hanging down, and it's just scraping along the floor. Nothing to worry about. Great run through qualifying yeah. today for Eric Zeiss. Uh, you know, another exciting young talent, Jules, who, you know, has been... Oh, hold on. How much faster is he here at the midpoint? Eight tenths of a second wow. up on Solon's at the midpoint. So this is shaping up to be a good run. He's got something within the wheel on the left rear. Now, whether the brake is just slightly sticking on, I'm not sure. I just saw some small, small spot. Very, very neat around there. Beautiful around yes. there. I mean, that's the way to do a donut. You know, it's not so spectacular to look at. The neat, the neater and tidier you are, that is where you're going to, you know, against the others who are a bit flamboyant, that's where you're going to pick up the precious seconds. Yeah, really exciting talent. We've seen him yes. a few times, a few seasons here in the WRC as well. It's going to be a mixed season for him and a busy year, he's hoping. Yeah, it's going to be a busy year. I mean, he, he, he's already told us he will be coming here for Portugal WRC. So look at this time. Don't it's quickest. Yeah. Eric Seiss. Eric Seiss, fastest through. 126.5 is the new fastest time on the board. Apologies to Miguel Carrera, who held it for a long time he valiantly. It, no, However, it's gone. He held it longer than he probably thought he was going to hold it for, <laughs> with no disrespect to him. A big smile on your face, Eric. Your quickest through so far. How was it? Oh, really? Ah, it's good. Uh, it's always good when you finish this stage, because nobody likes this stage. But when you finish and spectators are uh, OK, everybody had enjoyed the stage, it's OK. So. Yeah, I'm smiling because I enjoy it, and uh, now we are looking forward for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Norbert Herzig, next up. Let's see how he does around the... Uh, yeah. When I spoke to him earlier today, I mean, obviously they're all looking forward to this weekend. They're all looking forward to the gravel stages, as, as Eric mentioned. They want to get this one out of the way because it's so, so easy to make a mistake on these type of stages. What a lovely guy he is, though. He's, yeah, no, lovely. absolutely, completely lovely, but also, again, reiterating the fact that, you know, maybe a different weekend from what they were all expecting in terms of conditions out there, and potentially one of the toughest ones he thinks that he will compete across. Yeah, I mean, uh, Norby's four-time Hungarian champion, uh, predominantly on tarmac, the, yeah. the Hungarian champion. But uh, he, two years ago, he drove in the Polo in the VW, and last year he moved back to the Skoda. He was like a transformed driver. The Skoda really suiting him a lot better. Probably we'll see more out of him, spectacular-wise and results-wise, on the tarmac, because that's his preferred surface. But, you know, he is a reliable driver. That is what he is. But an already a podium, three podiums in the European Rally Championship, so he has got to be a force to be reckoned with. Let's take a look at the time then to Eric's here. It is going to be a little bit slower. 1.8 seconds slower which puts him in eighth position overall. It's a joint time with Georg Linnemar. Let's hear from him with Neil Cole. Norby, safely through the Super Special, how was it? Everything was okay. I was uh, someplace a little bit careful because uh, uh, next to the road the concrete was too neck, too close. But we are here. It was a joke, and tomorrow will be the really rally. And in Hungarian, please. Absolutely, the real stuff starts tomorrow. We have eight stages lined up for you tomorrow. Efren Lorena now, runner up. <laughs> 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 Always kind of takes your breath away a little bit how close they are getting to the concrete barrier. Oh, oh no! Oh. What's happened there with Lorena? So he's. It's as so if he really just awesome. wouldn't turn in. It's as if there was a, a, a. The handbrake didn't work or something and he just went straight forward. But. Uh, so difficulty getting around the corner there yeah. for Lorena. So that's pressure, seconds lost. I mean, at the split, it was looking good. Um, See, he's very uh, wide there. He's very there, wide he? around the donuts. There's something. Is there something wrong here? Something wrong, wide. 
I mean, have we, like, you know, the handbrake as in that first hairpin, that, that's a, a, either a, a, a braking in a straight line and turning or a handbrake. We just seem to kind of like not do really anything. So is there a small little issue with him, Lorena and Sara Fernandez? Sara Fernandez is obviously the reigning European rally champion. Absolutely. She was the co-driver's champion last year because Mickelson changed his co-drivers during the season. I had a fantastic chat with her and she was saying how much they were looking forward to the season ahead, but how fantastic it had been last year. Spain now, is well represented, represented in the European Rally Championship, isn't it? With some big talent. But the Renner, that is had a bit of a, a disaster there for him. OK, let's find out then if there is an issue with Lorena, with Neil. Ten point three seconds off the pace. Ephraim, we saw that you looked like a stall. Is there a problem with the car? Yes. What's happened? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we have problems. So yeah, he, it, to me, it just looks... He's gone to pull the handbrake, and it, it, it's just... I don't know whether it's a handbrake issue or a hydraulic issue. Like, with, it, it's... It's anyway. He, he looks frustrated. Luckily, they have a service in the morning, so hopefully yeah, they, they can get can that sorted. Sort it. Okay, so stage classification for you then after stage one. Eric Seiss there with the advantage, six tenths of a second over Correa. So lands third. Ken Torn fourth, 1.2 off the pace. Armando Arujo fifth, 1.3 seconds behind. Then Tempestini, Linnemeyer, Herxig to the top eight. And we are going to be heading down into the service park now to join Kiri, who is there for us. Well, you know the old saying, you can't win a rally on a super special, but you can lose it. So that gives you an idea of what's in store. The fans are plenty here in Portugal. And what is in store for you tomorrow? Well, it's a full day of rally mud and action. We've got eight stages and one service to break it all up. OK, so at nine o'clock, you'll see stage two, three, four and five follow. Finishing up at 12.20, the service that we mentioned is 1.15. Then three o'clock, we're back on air with you for Stage six, stage seven, eight, and nine will take you all the way through to six at 29. And we'll be getting you all of the interviews at the end of the day and see where we're sitting at the end of day two here in Portugal. Now, don't forget, you can join us across all of our social media. Make sure you use the hashtag and it is ERC, FIA, ERC, if you want to join in the conversation across uh, all of our different social media social media platforms that's what I was trying to say <laughs> okay well from all of us here tonight it is goodbye but we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning make sure you're there